Let's see if we can get the plug and charge action going here. Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're taking an Arctic road trip to Durham, New Hampshire. It's really, really cold outside here in Maryland. It's about 17 degrees right now. It's even colder overnight, probably down around 10 or even in the single digits. But this trip is really gonna test the cold weather range of the Rivian. So we're excited to get out there and see how it performs. So let's get started. Okay, everyone, so we're on the road. The outside temperature is about 23 degrees as shown on the display. It's warmed up a couple degrees. The battery was nice and warm because we did the scheduled departure. Battery was 73 degrees when we left. We're planning our first stop at the Mill of Jersey Gardens. That's in Elizabeth, New Jersey. It's 207 miles from where we are now and we're at 96% state of charge. Now I've reset my trip meter and I am in conserve mode so that I can get the most efficiency possible. And I think most folks when they drive a Rivian on the highway on a long road trip are gonna be in conserve mode because the range is gonna be more important than having the four wheel drive. And because of that, that's why we're doing this trip in conserve mode. But my trip meter says we've gone 10.4 miles and we're averaging 1.78 miles per kilowatt hour, which is actually pretty good considering it's now saying 21 outside. So we're gonna to continue to monitor things along this road trip. This will be the first time we're taking the Rivian on a long road trip in such frigid conditions. 21 degrees is pretty cold. Any electric vehicle below 20 degrees really, really takes a hard hit to the range. And it'll be a good test for the Rivian scheduled departure feature, which just came in the 2023.50 software update. So I'll check back in with you guys in a bit. People, if you're gonna be out driving on the highway, clean your roof off. Moving a little faster here because I don't want this truck getting in front of me. Folks, if this efficiency keeps up, I don't see how we're gonna have any problem making it to our first charging stop. We have 168 miles to go. And let's go back here, 2.28 miles per kilowatt hour. So for most of you that don't know, there is a way to calculate how much range you're gonna have fairly easily. And a lot of times it's better than the range estimator on the car. So we know from both the EPA documents and from testing that the Rivian large battery has about 131 kilowatt hours of usable energy. And so if we're getting two miles per kilowatt hour, which we're doing better than that now, but let's just say two miles per kilowatt hour, that means we could get about 262 miles out of the battery before we hit zero. And obviously if we're doing better than that, we're gonna get more range. So all you do to calculate the range based on your efficiency is you take your efficiency which right now it's 2.28, and I don't have a calculator in front of me, but you're gonna basically do 131 times 2.28, and that's gonna give you the amount of range that you can get out of the battery. Now, obviously, you don't wanna run the battery to zero, and that's also assuming you're starting at 100%. But you get the idea. So we're gonna to continue to move along here. We've gone 50 miles so far, and the efficiency is dropping a little bit because we're going a little bit faster. But I'll check in with you guys in a bit. Another nice thing about the current software updates is that Driver Plus is really, really nice now. You can do lane changes without having to manually disengage and re-engage the auto steer. So I'll demonstrate this for you. I did it in a previous video, 
but I'm basically going to take over control here, and then when I get in my lane, it automatically re-enables itself. Really a great feature. Okay, everyone, so we're moving on along here. My last 15 minutes says 2.18, and we've gone 128 and a half miles, and we're averaging 2.17 miles per kilowatt hour. So really good, and the outside temperature still says 25. Now, I will note that we are in conserve mode, but we're in the standard ride height. We are not in the low ride height. The battery's cooled down one degree, it's down to 67 degrees Fahrenheit. And we have not started preconditioning for the charger yet. We have about 86 miles to go for the charger. Now, once we get closer to the charger, we're about an hour and 15 minutes out now. When we get about 45 minutes, I'm gonna go on the screen and actually select the charger itself so that the truck will precondition. But I'm really happy with how we're doing, especially given that it's 25 degrees outside. Uh, 2.17 miles per kilowatt hour is pretty darn good. All right, so I'm a little less than 45 minutes out from Elizabeth, New Jersey. So I'm now gonna select the charger on the nav screen so that the truck will precondition. My battery temperature has gone down to 66. My efficiency has gone down a little bit to 2.11. So I'm gonna go ahead back into my navigation. I'm gonna tap the little lightning bolt over here on the right. Now I want the Electrify America station, but I've got my network set to Electrify America and Rivian. And I tapped on speed and I want the three lightning bolts, which is nothing less than 150 kilowatt. And so now I'm going to zoom out on the map here. And I want to go up to where I see Elizabeth. There's New Brunswick. This is the Elizabeth charger here, so I'm gonna tap that. Electrify America, Mills at Jersey Gardens. I'm gonna say go. And it says I'm 42 minutes out. So now that I have the charger selected, it's gonna precondition the truck as needed to ensure that when we pull up at that charger, we're gonna get the maximum charging speed possible. So I'll check in with you guys again when we get to the charger. We had to take a detour. The mill at Jersey Gardens was completely full. And so we're here at an EVgo station in Carteret. And these chargers are only 100 kilowatt. So it's gonna be a slow charge. We need to get up to 70% and we're only getting 78 kilowatt. Now, since I'm charging, I can't view the temperature of the battery but our average went down just a little bit to 2.07 miles per kilowatt hour. So we're gonna charge up here to 70% and head on to our next destination. And I'll catch up with you guys when we get back on the road. All right, so we left the Carteret. It was kind of a sketchy uh, EV charger and it was only 100 kilowatt. So we charged up to 46%. We left there and we're going to the Tesla Magic Dock charger in Brewster, New York. You know, there's a Duncan there. That's the only thing about the Rivian navigation is that it seems to prefer to minimize the number of charging stops versus getting you there as quick as possible. So it wanted us to charge there at Carteret for an hour to get to 80% before continuing on our trip. And it was just a really slow charger. It was only getting about 80 kilowatts. So we decided to take matters into our own hands and we pulled up the Tesla Magic Dock charger in Brewster, New York. The EA chargers on this route from Maryland to 
Massachusetts, New Hampshire area are just always full and there's always a line so it's really bad and I mean this was two o'clock in the afternoon I can't imagine what it would be during rush hour or in the evening so I went ahead and removed EA and so we've got EVgo Tesla and the Rivian Adventure Network we're gonna see if we can make it with just those chargers because even on the last trip, EA was just terrible. The chargers are broken, or they're full, and there's a long wait. So long story short, sometimes you have to deviate from what the navigation tells you. And EA still has a lot of work to do, unfortunately. EVgo is a little more expensive, but their chargers seem to be at least a little bit more available. Anyway, I'll catch up with you when we get further along in the trip. Oh, and our efficiency is 2.07 miles per kilowatt hour. We've gone 215.9 miles. Catch up with you in a bit. Okay, everyone, so here in Brewster, getting good speed, 141, 142 kilowatt. I don't think it preconditioned on the way here, but it may have, and I didn't notice it. But let's take a look at our efficiency. You can see we're doing uh, 2.1 miles per kilowatt hour, and we've traveled 285 and a half miles so far. And it looks like it's starting to get dark. So, and it's 23 degrees outside. So I think we're doing pretty darn good for it being so cold. All right, everyone, it's uh, about 737 and we're about 25 miles from our final charging stop of the evening. The temperature has dropped down to 16 and I go into my gauge here, battery temperatures dropped back down to 76 degrees and my efficiencies dropped quite a bit but it's still above two miles per kilowatt hour average for this trip. I'm sitting at 2.03 and I've gone 389.7 miles. So I really can't complain about the performance of this truck in these really cold temperatures. I'm not sure why the media is sensationalizing the performance of EVs in the cold weather so much, but for some reason they are and it's just not true. So we're uh, almost to our final charging stop and I'll check in with you guys again shortly. Let's see if we can get some plug and charge action going here. I don't know if this is gonna reach. This is what we wound up with at the last station. It just sat there and said starting and it spun in a circle for a while. Let's see if it's gonna do anything. Taking a really long time. Okay, so we actually had to activate it on the app. The plug and charge did not work. Looks like we're getting about 100 kilowatt. We didn't precondition on the way up here. Hopefully the speed increases somewhat. This is supposed to be a 350 kilowatt charger. So let's keep our fingers crossed that we ramp up a little bit here. Battery was still in the low 70s when we pulled up. Okay, everyone, well, we made it. And so let's go ahead and take a look at our efficiency numbers. So we ended the trip with 1.99 miles per kilowatt hour. So right about two miles per kilowatt hour. We traveled 500.2 miles and we used a total of 251 kilowatt hours. So I'm really happy with the, these numbers, especially when it's 18 degrees outside. And it was below 30 the entire trip. It was in the mid 20s to upper teens. So this is a very, very good result for Rivian. I'm very happy with these numbers. Unfortunately, there's no charger at this hotel. 
again. So I'm gonna have to go into Maine and top off the charge so I have enough to get around town here while we're here in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. So stay tuned for that. I'll pick back up with you guys when I'm in Maine for the final charge of the night. Okay, everyone, I'm here at the Charger topping everything off. It seems like the mainstream media has just been really down on electric vehicles for no real reason. And the latest thing is that they're horrible in the cold or they're stacking up on dealer lots or it's always something against electric vehicles. I honestly don't understand why the news media has made this huge shift. But nonetheless, if you listen to the mainstream news media, you're misinformed really all the news stories about tesla's breaking down and getting stuck with uh, chargers not working it's basically one charger and the mainstream media is making some huge deal out of it like it's affecting a million people when it really affected a handful of people but nonetheless the road trip with the rivian here in these really cold temperatures has been impressive the performance has been impressive so it just goes to show what a difference it makes when you precondition the battery that update from Rivian allowing you to schedule a departure is a huge update. So I'm going to wrap it up here, folks. I'm going to charge here for a bit longer and then try to get some sleep. What do you guys think of all these stories in the news media? And what do you think about the charging performance today of the Rivian? Let us know down in the comments section. As always, remember to like, subscribe, and hit that bell so you get notified. And thank you guys so much for watching. Reach. All right.